2022 Honda Civic versus the 2022 Toyota Corolla. Who makes the best affordable compact car? That's what we're gonna find out. Welcome to Car Help Corner, where we help you, the consumer, master the process of car buying and car ownership. Both the Civic and Corolla have long been two of the most popular cars in the compact segment. They are the go-to options for anyone who's just looking for a simple, reliable car to get the job done on a budget. Although there are a lot of great cars in the segment, including the Mazda 3, the Subaru Impreza, the Hyundai Elantra, and the Kia Forte, both the Civic and Corolla have long been two of the safest choices to go with, thanks to their no-nonsense reputation for amazing long-term reliability and excellent value for money. Now the question is, now that Honda has introduced a fully redesigned Civic for the 2022 model year, is it as good or better than the current generation Corolla? Well, make sure to stick around to the end of the video because that's what we're gonna find out. Now the outgoing version of the Civic was pretty famous for its fairly adventurous looking design. It was far edgier than any Civic that had come before it. Now most of that has seemed to have gone out the window for this redesigned Civic. It's a far more conservative looking design than the previous generation model, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. It has a very clean, somewhat elegant look to it, and I have to agree with those who say that it looks a lot like a shrunken down Honda Accord. One of the great things about the Civic is that you can get it in a couple of different body styles. It comes in a conventional looking sedan, or you can get it as a more practical hatchback, which should be good for those who prioritize cargo space. Compared to the Civic, the Corolla is also available as both a sedan and a hatchback, which is very nice, but also has a sportier, edgier look to it versus the Civic's more conservative design, which I'm actually a big fan of. I never would have thought that the Corolla would one day become the sportier looking car of the two, but I actually think that's the case now. Another difference between the two is the overall size and interior space. There's no question that the Civic is the larger car between the two and should be the better option for anyone who's looking to maximize interior space. Now, when it comes to drivetrains, the Civic gives you a choice between two different engines. If you go for one of the lower trims, you get a naturally aspirated two liter four cylinder that makes 158 horsepower. If you go for one of the higher trim versions though, you get a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine that makes 180 horsepower and a lot more torque, giving you much better acceleration. Whichever engine you go with, you get a continuously variable CVT automatic transmission, which actually performs very well. There is no manual transmission option available on the regular sedan versions anymore. If you want to get a manual, you're going to have to go with the hatchback body style, or of course, one of the performance versions of the Civic, the SI or the Type R. Now the car that I'm testing here comes with the 1.5 turbo engine and I have to say that I'm very impressed with the way this engine performs. It makes really good power giving this car decent acceleration. I think it has a zero to 60 time of around seven and a half seconds, which is pretty good. And it also has good fuel economy. It can easily average around 35 to 40 miles per gallon or six to seven liters per 100 kilometers driving on the highway, which is very good fuel economy. My only real reservation with this engine is that it has had a somewhat un-Honda-like reputation when it comes to its reliability. In the past, this engine had an issue known as oil dilution, where the fuel would mix with the engine oil, causing rough running issues and drivability problems. Now, Honda did address the problem and come up with a permanent fix, which is great. And the latest models don't seem to have anywhere near the level of complaints that they did in the past. But it still just goes to show that sometimes turbocharged engines can just be more problematic problematic than a traditional naturally aspirated engine. If you're buying a Civic to hold on to for the long term for say upwards of 10 to 15 years and you just don't want to be concerned with any reliability issues, then the safest choice is to go with the base 2 liter naturally aspirated engine which doesn't have any of the complicated turbocharger issues. In the case of the Corolla, you get a choice between either a base 1.8 liter four cylinder engine or a slightly more powerful two liter four cylinder engine, both of which are naturally aspirated. And you get a choice between a regular six speed manual or a continuously variable automatic transmission. Now, none of the drivetrains offer the same level of performance that you get with the 1.5 turbo in the Civic, but they do offer solid reliability. So if you're just looking for a car that's going to last you a long time without any experience expensive repair bills, then the Corolla is definitely a no-brainer. You also get great fuel economy with the Corolla, similar to that of the Civic, and the Corolla also offers the option of a hybrid drivetrain, which offers mind-blowing fuel efficiency, upwards of 55 miles per gallon, or four and a half liters per 100 kilometers, which is absolutely amazing. 
When it comes to the overall driving experience though, both the Civic and Corolla offer a solid driving feel. I've been driving the Civic for some time now and I'm pretty impressed by the way that it drives. It has great handling, solid steering and brakes, and very good ride quality. I drove a new Corolla recently as well and I was equally impressed by the way that car drove too. Either one of these would be a great choice for anyone who's just looking for a nice balance between comfort and handling. Although they both drive great, there are some major differences between these two cars, especially when it comes to the interior. The Civic especially has a very nice interior with really good materials and build quality, similar to that of an Accord, giving off this really nice upscale vibe. I really like some of the design choices they've gone with in here, like this honeycomb grille that goes right across the dash, and everything just feels super high quality and rock solid, exactly the way you would expect from a Honda. The usability of everything in here is great as well. The climate controls are very straightforward and we have this excellent touchscreen infotainment system, which is a huge upgrade from the one that came before it. Lower trims come with a seven inch touchscreen display with both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But if you go for this top trim version, you get a larger nine inch touchscreen display with wireless connectivity. The interface is basically the same one from the Accord, which is a very good thing because it has amazing looking graphics, an excellent menu structure, and it's just very easy to use. I really like this touchscreen a lot. Definitely much better than the one that you get in the Corolla. What's also nice is that we have a full digital display behind the steering wheel, which looks really good too. Honda did an amazing job with the graphics on the screen and the way that all the information is laid out is very good too. Honda absolutely nailed it with the interior of the Civic and it's definitely a noticeable step above from what you get in the Corolla. Now there's definitely nothing wrong with the interior of the Corolla. Everything is very high quality. All of the controls are straightforward, easy to use, including the touchscreen infotainment system. And you get plenty of great features. Just everything feels a slight step behind from what you get in the Civic. There's also not as much interior space. The Civic definitely feels like the larger, more spacious car of the two, especially when it comes to the rear seat space. If interior space and cargo space are a priority for you, then the Civic is definitely going to be the more appealing car of the two. Both cars, however, are very good when it comes to safety and come standard with lots of great active safety features on every single trim level. With Honda Sensing, you get forward collision warning with emergency braking, lane departure warning with lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, and blind spot monitoring too. The only feature that's really missing as standard is rear cross traffic alert, which you do need to move up to the higher trim levels to get, which is a little bit unusual. In the case of the Corolla, you get Toyota Safety Sense, which includes all the same features as Honda Sensing, plus also the rear cross traffic alert, which makes it the more comprehensive active safety suite between these two cars. And finally, we come to the pricing and value. Now, in the past, these two cars were fairly evenly priced, but now it seems that the Civic is the slightly more expensive one of the two. Now, although it does cost more than the Civics of the past, I still think that this car is an amazing value because not only has it grown in size, offering more performance, a better driving experience, but you also have a lot more features and more active safety features than ever before. It just offers a lot for the money. The same is also true of the Corolla, which is an amazing buy. And in the case of both cars, because they have such great reputations when it comes to their reliability and longevity, they also have amazing resale value as well. You can buy either one of these cars and if you need to sell it down the road, whether it's five years later or 10 years later, you're going to get a lot of your money back on the back end, which is really great. Something that you don't necessarily get with other cars in this class. I think that the decision as to which one of these cars to buy really does come down to personal preference and the price that you're getting more than anything else because in either case, you're getting a very well-designed car that offers an amazing reputation for reliability, excellent value for money. Both of them are really no-brainers. I think that if you're ultimately looking for the more cost-effective car between the two, the one that's going to give you the best price, the best long-term reliability and value for money, then I think the slightly superior choice is going to be the Corolla. It's just such a safe car to go with and it's the easiest car to recommend in the compact segment. Now that's not to say that the Civic isn't nearly as good or even better in many ways than the Corolla because it realistically is. Honda did an amazing job with this redesign. When you look at everything that it offers, its performance, its great driving experience, the amount of interior space that you get, the great interior tech and design, I really think that this is one of the absolute best cars in the segment.
It does cost a little bit more money, but because of that amazing resale and reputation, this is still an undeniably great value. So let me know what you think of the redesigned Civic and Corolla. Which of these two cars would you take, or would you buy something else in this segment instead? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. You can also check out some of my other videos by taking a look at these links over here. Make sure to follow me on TikTok and Instagram. And if you need any additional car buying advice, recommendations, or help with getting a great deal on your next new car purchase, you can check out carhelpcanada.com. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.